of the Ashland Independent Film Festival, the home of the incredible Rogue Valley, for your writing and your directing, your incredible acting for this amazing film. I'd like to present you with the Ashland Independent Film Festival Rogue Award. I'm just curious. I um, have a lot of adoption in my family, so yes to the second question. Um, I'm a mother and a stepmother, and I, I, my whole experience of family has um, no consistency and a lot of inclusiveness, so, so yes. And um, did you say the, the biggest obstacle? Is that what you said? Wow, cool. Um, aha, I see what you mean. Um, I don't know that there was an aha, except everything you thought and hoped and feared was magnified by, you know, the size of the job and the small amount of the budget and the small amount of days that we had. I mean, I don't know what it would be like to direct a bigger movie where you actually had an hour to eat lunch and paid people. We didn't do any of those things, so I don't know. I honestly don't know what that would be like. People tell me that it just gets, the chaos expands to fit the amount of money and time that you have. Um, this was, you know, um, definitely as big an undertaking creatively as I've ever done. By accident, you just have to, if you have this small amount of money, you have to just be more creative in how you're going to get there. But certainly, um, details like the difference in the colors that are around um, April's apartment, the spare you know, kind of lonely quality of how it looked. Um, the composition, you know, she's on the side of the frame and then there's just this empty space. All, all that is very much on, on purpose. Um, and the hope, you know, the real challenge was Beth's world because that, you know, needed more money. So literally we were borrowing furniture and her clothes and asking people to lend us clothes and um, trying to do everything we could to make them as different as possible. Um, and the Colin Firth home, we were just very lucky to find a place that would be believably affordable to this guy and also have something beautiful. And so when we found a place on the water, the water became, you know, a big, a big find for us. So all of it is, is very deliberate and you just sort of hope it helps tell the story and doesn't call attention to itself. Um, you know, the movie looks like it's about adoption or looks like it's about motherhood or looks like it's about uh, some love triangle, but for me it, it was about betrayal, and these other things were a way of telling that story. Um, betrayal that she suffers, betrayal that she perpetrates, betrayal by God, and, and she betrays herself all the way through by pushing away this notion of adopting. So I didn't mean for it really to be about adoption, honestly, but the choice to have um, a daughter this way at the end was meant to be more of you know, an expression of her loving herself, or, you know, if I have to explain all that, it didn't totally happen, but that was the hope. That, the, and it isn't clear to everybody, and I don't know if that's okay, but I, one of the reasons she protests too much over and over, I sort of added that in to hopefully make it clear that, you know, she did the last thing on earth she was ever gonna do, so that was the, that was the wish. Hi. It was all about fast. This one had three weeks, this one had to get home by 10, this one, when you don't pay anybody, you don't have any power really to make them do what you want them to do. So I was basically at, you know, their mercy. But she is, um, you know, you see this film and you think about The Rose and then you think about these broad comedies and then I just saw her in Vegas and you think about her singing in bathhouses and you think, okay, the size of the talent is, you know, not to be underestimated. And there were times when I was sure I had the way a scene should be played, and she would show up with a very different idea. And probably the smartest thing I did was, was to put my idea away and let her do her thing. A couple of her best moments are, you know, totally hers and not anything I had planned at all. Um, and she's smart. These actors are smart, and I think she was smart enough to know she was partly... First of all, she was hired because she's good and talented and funny and could hear eight pages of fast dialogue, sort of the way it was meant to be. Done, but also because her famousness helped to be a contrast to this other woman, and at the same time she had to be in this movie. She had to 
really understand the size and tone of this movie, and she's just smart enough to get all of that. Um, and in terms of why 10 years, or why I stuck with it, I think, um, you know, the things that it's about mean a lot to me. Motherhood, daughterhood, betrayal, um, those are things that I, you know, I, I don't lose interest in, I don't totally understand even after 10 years, so that's probably why. And I have, um, <laughs> it was at one point maybe going to be a bigger movie, and then we lost that money, and then it was going to be half as big, and we lost that money, and then it ended up being this big, but my uh, very favorite aunt in the world lives here, and um, I sent her this script and she, uh, I was having a lot, a really hard time raising money for the movie. I, I really went through, I don't know, years and years and years of different versions of no. Polite no's, insulting no's. A lot of people said we love it, but we don't know how to sell it. Is it a big movie or is it a little movie? Is it a funny movie? Is it a serious movie? One big studio just didn't like it. <laughs> there was no spin on it. He just said, I just don't like it at all. Um, but I sent it to my Aunt Elaine, who sent me the first bit of money for the movie, which I have in my hand. <laughs> I will not disclose the amount, but I will tell you that it was worth it to me to keep it and show it to you all. So it's right here in my pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but when you are you know, in a sea of no's, one yes like that, or yes from one of those actors, is the thing that makes you say, well, maybe I'm not completely insane, maybe there are people who will hear the, hear the movie, you know, who will hear something that, that will mean something to them. I would say they were crazy. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of them. <laughs> they said this is really good and really classy and not quite a movie. And I, I thought they were right, but I didn't know what was wrong with it. So I tried to rewrite it, but keep it pretty much intact with a writing partner that I worked with on Mad About You. And it still wasn't quite there. And so I put it away for a long time and made a bunch of other movies and went through a lot in my own life. And um, I think it's like that thing of remaking a good movie is harder than remaking a bad movie or adapting a novel you're not in love with is easier, you know, there was everything right and nothing wrong with this novel, so to make huge changes was very counterintuitive, but after some time went by, I realized that she needed to really want something that you could watch on the screen. What she wants in the novel is a subtler thing, but the wish for a baby isn't in the novel. Um, and I had my own wish happening at that time, and so it seemed very conspicuous that this should be, you know, what she wishes for. Um, and also, I, I knew that the best movies, you know, screenplays I've read have that one sentence that it's about, and, and getting that one sentence, which in this case had to do with betrayal, took me just a, a wildly long time of staring at four by six cards and staring at a computer and reading an essay by James Hillman, who wrote an essay uh, called Betrayal, and over a long period of time, with help from someone in the front row, I was able to get a sentence that I could care about, and that allowed me, neither of the men that are in the movie or in the novel, uh, the baby wishes in the novel, all of that started to come once I knew what the movie was going to be really about for me. So there's a long answer. I mean, it was a pretty happy set, but again, it was all about, there will be no light in the sky in two hours. So it was mostly like <laughs> directing a movie while your hair is on fire, literally, is <laughs> what it was like. So I can't say that it was... There would be, there would, it didn't happen to me, like, there, I just, because some part of me, it's happened with other movies I've done, often very serious, dark, dramatic movies, that, for some reason, all the darkness is, is in the movie, and there's a lot of humor on the, on the set, but, um, but in, in this case, I think, that, you know, I knew what it would cost me if I laughed, so, <laughs> I didn't. She had faith, yeah. Is that you, Andrew? Yes, yes. I knew that person. That's why you said hi. I was like, hi. Um, it feels amazing. It feels great. It feels great. I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, overplaying the number of no's. There was one, a couple years of no's. We don't want to make it with you as an actress. And then, no, we don't want your rewrite. And then, and then it's terrific. But, no, you know, so, so it's, 
It's, it's amazing. And it's very comforting. This movie is, um, you know, people have said, how much is this about you? And the truth is, it, on the surface, it isn't. And underneath, totally. It's totally, you know, but I'm everybody. I'm, you know, I'm all of them. So it is very much me. Um, and so to hear people laugh at things that only my most intimate people really um, hear or that I can talk about with them, that's, you know, very remarkable.